Hey, Bitch Talkers, this is Aaron. Before we get into our first interview of 2023 with David Diggs, just want to give a quick update and a quick ask. We are fundraising for our trip to Sundance, which is just in a few days. And um, we want to thank everyone who's donated so far. Uh, I think we're around 2000 or so. But it really actually costs about $6,000 for us uh, total to get to Sundance. That's transportation, housing, food, etc. And uh, we're a small team of four. And we're really excited to go back to Sundance in real life since uh, January of 2020, which is crazy. So if you are interested in donating, we have all the details in our show notes. If you're listening to this podcast, you can just click into the show notes and we have all the details of all the different levels that you can donate at. You don't have to be stuck to those levels. You can donate whatever you want. If you can't do 25 bucks, 10 bucks is great. Five bucks is great. Anything is great. Um, it all goes towards the cost of covering Sundance and um, we really appreciate it. So again, you can find the links in the show notes for this show. You can also go to our Instagram or Facebook and find the link to donate. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who's donated. If you're thinking about donating, you still can. And we really appreciate this because as you know, if you've been a listener, if you are a listener, you know that we are truly independent we don't ask for much. We don't charge for our content. We just um, ask that you help us get to Sundance. So thanks so much. And uh, on with the show. Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. I'm Erin. That's Ange. Hi. That's Char. Hello. You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com where you can sign up for our monthly e-news. For behind the scenes videos and two minute clips of our interviews, head to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You can find us every other Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. at bff.fm. And if you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For the love of God, do it. It really helps. Um, I'm going to start. I'm going to intro our friend here. Uh, hello, everyone. We have W. Diggs on Bitch Talk yet again. I don't know. I've lost count. <laughs> How many times? You've Four, been on? five, fifth time. I don't know. Not enough. Not enough. Oh, exactly. I agree. I agree. With it that. should be a biannual. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Quarterly, really. Um, <laughs> Quarterly. <laughs> Love you on the quarter system. Um, yeah. Uh, really, really appreciative of your time, David, as always. And um, you are our first interview of the episode year of 2023. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's 2023. And, yeah, <laughs> that happened. Yeah. That happened. Yeah. We're starting it off with a bang. Yeah, completely. <laughs> Try not to disappoint. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, this one's actually for us. We needed a, an emotional lift, so we're like, let's have to beat on. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right, great. You're emotional well, interview person. Yeah, emotional support person. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> interview. <laughs> no, but before we jump into all the millions of things that you're doing, I hope you got some rest over the holidays. Do you have like a Christmas thing you do every year? What's what does that look like? <laughs> no, we I haven't, you know, it's kind of just uh we're not a particularly religious family. Um but I, either me and me or or Emmy's. So we uh but we did I went I, I got to go back up to to the bay and see my family like before Christmas then we spent Christmas Eve down here with Emmy's family and then um yeah and then Christmas Day we like played board games and then uh had yeah it was, it was very very quiet oh and we went over uh Jasmine Cetus Jones uh uh was like down the street and we went over and had dinner with her and her mom so it was like it was very it was very chill and very uh family oriented and we're now obsessed with this board game called splendor duel uh it's Mm. a board game in which you are you are uh jewel collectors like competing to build the best (laughs) like crowns and tiaras and shit for royals so really <laughs> wow <laughs> and me and emmy splendor, duel? splendor, splendor jewel? duel duel splendor duel like you know like yeah fancy. duel to the death Ooh, 
So are you a big <laughs> are you a big game person in general? Because I was going to ask if you would ever go on like Wheel of Fortune or something. You know how they have the celebrities Jeopardy. going oh, yeah. on all these Jeopardy like. <sighs> I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> Sometimes I think like, yeah, yeah, I'm, that's really what I'm supposed to do. But I'm actually not very good at trivia. Um, I'd be better at Wheel of Fortune, maybe. Um, or the period, pyramid. Pyramid. Oh, yeah. $25,000 yeah. pyramid. That one is fun. Yeah. I love all those shows. Um, but I can't say I'd be particularly good at them necessarily. But, you know, mm. it, it could be fun to go on, maybe. I don't know. We'd re we'd root for you. I mean, Ange loves watching game shows. She has a game show network on at all times. Regularly. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I'm What's your one? Do you have psyche. like a, It's too dark out favorite? there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Do you have a favorite, favorite game show? Oh, I like the Pyramid because the pyramid. it's like Taboo. And Taboo is my favorite game to play. Yeah, yeah, ever. yeah. That's a, yeah. That's a solid choice. Yeah, Taboo is the best. You played Taboo. <laughs> Actually, Aaron played Taboo with me and my family once. It yeah. was kind of rough. <laughs> Yeah, I've never gone back. <laughs> you can't ha you can't have a filter when you're playing taboo. So some things came out. You yeah, know, it was now we can leave. We it can leave rough. it on the field. Okay, uh -oh. moving on. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I follow along on on your Instagram stories sometimes, and I saw that you uh, went on tour. I think twice, not on purpose, last yeah, it, year with clipping. <laughs> do you do yeah. you want to talk about that? It looked a little rough around the edges. Part of it. It was yeah. You know, we haven't toured in in three years since the world shut down so this was our first time uh, getting back out to Europe and we we had planned to do two legs of the tour which was cool like a short one to start and then take mm. about a month off and then do a real one which was like it was something crazy it was something that I'm definitely too old for you know like like <laughs> 25 shows in 27 days or something like that um. you know um one of those one of those young man's tours but uh <laughs> but <laughs> but um but yeah, the first one was a trip, just like travel is crazy right now. And like, we definitely missed our show in Helsinki. And so part of the reason the next leg was so long is because we were trying to make up a Helsinki show. The only day they could do it was like a week after that tour was supposed to end. So we just sort of filled in random UK dates for that thing. But it meant that we just took whatever spot a particular venue in a town had open. Um, and so we were like zigzagging across the UK all over the place. It, it was really silly routing. It was kind of the only way we can make it work. Um, all that said, it was super fun to play rap shows in the world again. Um, I, I was sort of had forgotten how much I really loved doing that. Mm. Um, and so that was that was great. And like, yeah, we got to play in towns we'd never been to before. All the shows were lit to fuck like crazy like it <laughs> like felt uh unhinged in like the best way you know everyone was like really ready to be at shows again um, and that was super fun energy to be part of and we put out two albums since the world shut down so like we had never gotten to play those songs in front of people before so it was also a good learning experience about how to perform those songs and you know it's a very different thing recording and performing are very very different things and so you really do have to kind of try out a song on the road i think mm -hmm. to figure out how it works live and and really what the energy is and so many of them i was wrong about you know <laughs> i was mm. like I thought it would tip a certain way and it definitely wasn't that way, but it, it was fun. How do the, the European crowds differ from American crowds? Do you think they go harder? Uh, I, it depends, you know, I, each country and kind of each city, but really like countries kind of tend to have personas, you know? Mm -hmm. um, American rap music crowds are very like, show me they're very like show and prove you know like <laughs> word word like this until you prove up uh, that we should be better yes. than like that yeah um <laughs> european crowds like in general tend to have less of that attitude but um but it was funny you know our clipping makes um <laughs> I used to say, this isn't really true, but the thing I used to joke about was that, like, we make music for 19-year-olds who hate their parents. Uh, but it was, like, <laughs> it's, not, it's not actually true. Uh, we get a lot of parents and kids coming to our shows together mm -hmm. also. But, like, um, you know, it's always existed sort of on the border of, um, like, underground experimental music and, um, like, pop 
rap music. And so like the the shows tend to have these interesting mix of people who like want to do what they want to do. So like the people who are there to have the mosh pit are going to have it. And it doesn't really mm. matter <laughs> if it doesn't matter what the song is. It doesn't matter. Like that's what they came for was to like run into each other. And so it's that's gonna happen. And like the <laughs> the sort of vocabulary that develops at these shows is really interesting like the mosh pit section will have its section and they uh, can do that and everyone gives them that space and then there's the section of people who really want to like listen and people sort of find their space and they like exist there and i end up getting to perform to like four or five different groups of people which is <laughs> kind of a trip and that sort of happens in most places but um and the other interesting thing was that we would go to places like um you know like Copenhagen right and we'd come into the airport and like the customs officer would be like oh well don't, don't expect much out of the crowds so you're playing music oh don't expect much out of the crowds here we're very like we're very quiet we're very you know but like they appreciate it they really wanted us to know that like just because they were quiet doesn't mean that they weren't appreciative and then we play the show and it would go off like <laughs> like the loudest most responsive like screaming all the words moshing the hardest like, you know so um yeah it's great touring's great everybody should do it if you make music you should do it but you should definitely start it younger <laughs> <laughs> take care of your knees everything you should start younger if you can uh I actually, I'm I'm glad we're talking about clipping, and, and this is why I brought it up because we never get to talk about clipping because you know you have a lot going on, um, mm -hmm. and we normally have you know like six minutes or twelve minutes or whatever uh, the time frame is. So, can you talk more about clipping, about the history of clipping? Because I sure. I read online, you know, it's like 2009 you started this band, or you yeah, that you all right. got together. So, um, I feel like it's a really interesting part of your life that we don't get to talk about. Yeah, clipping. Sorry if you catch like my dog piece, little pieces of my dog. Uh, oh, we want to see dogs, please, more dogs. Oh, Shar's coming over because she yeah. wants to see. Moose. Oh, Moose, say hi. Oh, hi. Your dog's <laughs> name is Moose. That's oh. Moose, and then Luna is down there. Oh. <laughs> That is so cute. And it's That's pouring fun. rain in Los Angeles, yes. so they're yep. they're very Here bored because. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, clipping. Uh, clipping, you know, uh, is with two of my oldest friends. That, as you guys know, I tend to work with people I've known for a long time. And so, um, yeah, uh, William Hudson was my friend. We met in ninth grade, or not ninth grade, in third grade, playing tag. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we've been friends ever since. And one of my sort of, um, like my, our taste in music is like, uh, a line we grew up going to the record store together going to amoeba or rasputin's mm. usually both every tuesday and spending every dollar we had by getting <laughs> whatever the new music was um and so and then also jonathan snipes who was his uh roommate freshman year in college they both went to ucla and so we've known each other for a very long time i used to when i would come home from brown i would go to their dorm and sleep on their floor they were on a quarter system so they always had more school than they were in school longer than I was and so um I would go to LA and like hang out and sleep on their floors and we would sort of talk about music and stuff but we didn't we all made music separately back in like the get back days and the band so we were all like making separate music um Jonathan had a great project um like electronic dance project called Captain Ahab and Bill had a project called Rail um, and a bunch of other noise experimental projects and then when I when me and Rafa moved to LA together they were already down there and they had started doing this thing where they were using noise techniques to make beats to existing rap instrumentals right so like um and the kind of brilliant thing about it, I mean, not instrumentals, rap acapellas. They would take like a ludicrous acapella and make a, a, a beat out of sort of noise sounds and using techniques that you would use to make noise music. And kind of the wonderful thing that happened was it pointed at the similarities between the two genres, as opposed to being a joke about how different they were, some like mashup thing, mashups were popular mm. at the time. Uh, this was like sort of, 
pointing to the similar spirits of the two genres of noise and and rap. And so um, when I got down there and started hearing that, so I was like, this is great. Why don't we, I mean, I rap, I could rap, we could do this with original songs. <laughs> We're like, okay. <laughs> we sort of tried some things and immediately it was like, oh, this is, this is super fun and we're going to keep doing this. And it was a, a side project for us. And we all had, everyone was doing other things, but the, um, I remember we put like five songs together. This is before our first album was called mid city. This is even before that we like the first five songs we finished. We sort of sent them around to friends and we're like, I, we think this is a band. And everybody was like, I don't know who that band's for, but like glad you guys are having fun. It's not for me, but you know, go ahead. And we're like, oh, okay. But I mean, it's still pretty good. It's pretty fun to play live. So um we would, you know, keep developing songs. We were playing at um, you know, underground places like Pear Space, which doesn't exist anymore. And the smell, we just uh, uh was that yesterday? Oh, Saturday. Saturday, we just played the 25th anniversary of this this spot, The Smell, in downtown LA, where we used to play mm. all the time when we were first getting started, and they asked us to come play this anniversary party, and it was awesome, um, but, but one of these, like, all-ages um, mm -hmm. spots where, like, you could just play, and that was kind of the scene we came up in. We kept making music, and eventually someone at Sub Pop Records, hey, I'm working. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Uh, someone at Sub Pop <laughs> Records like got, you know, got our music and they sent <laughs> they sent who would become our AR, Tony Kuo, down to a show <laughs> that we were playing actually at the smell. And he told he told this story when we finally signed. He was like, I walked into the door and immediately like got punched in the face by a kid in the mosh pit and was like, Yeah, oh. I'm signing these guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's all took. <laughs> um, <laughs> You planted that kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're like, when you see the old guy walk in, punch him in the face. Uh, Sorry, Tony. He's not really that much older than us. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, and so we've been doing that for a long time. And when it started out, we were, it was a lot of figuring out what the band was, you know? We have all these rules. or We had more rules then. It used to be like, no, um, we would never... <laughs> You guys are getting like the full, the full experience. Aww. They're like, oh. hi, hi, poppers. <laughs> yeah. They're like, it's raining. It sucks, right? Yeah. So they're just gonna fight. It's uh, fine. Okay. But oh, yeah. um, we, we, you know, like I don't write in the first person in the band. It's a, it's a rule we discovered, which turns out it's like pretty rare in rap songs. Um. But there, um, at first, there were no preset drum sounds. So everything, they were making every sound we used from analog synthesis. We still do a lot of that. Um, and a lot of field recording, too. Um, we also now totally use uh, existing drum machines and everything. But there's usually an intentionality to all of the sounds in the song. For some reason, there's a reason for the sounds in the beat to be in this particular song. We tend to do, like, heavily themed things. So we've done an album length like Afrofuturist space mm. opera. We've done like mm -hmm. our last two records were all each song were individual like horror short stories. Um, yeah, that, that, that kind of stuff, stuff that like scratches the sort of creative experimental itch of mine. Um, and I'm working with the two sort of most knowledgeable, talented music makers that I know. And so like, What's really nice for me about clipping is that nobody else works like this. And like everything, every song we've ever finished is, if we put it out, like that's what we were trying to do. It may not be what we started doing, but like there aren't a lot of, it, it's not like a, we don't jam. It's not like super fun, I don't think. Like, I don't think like most, <laughs> most like musicians would come into a clipping session and be like, oh, this is super fun. Like, it's not, we sit and like, work things until they work until they're doing the thing we were trying to do and then that's the song you know so like um but it is and then the shows end up being super fun so like mm -hmm. the music can be kind of a grind but um I don't know I love it there's nothing like it and now we've put out a lot of me I think we're this is album number seven or eight we're working on now oh. like there's a ton yes. of output actually 
Yeah. So that was the other crazy thing about playing tour was being like, oh, we have a lot of songs. Like, I don't know the <laughs> most of them. You know, I had to relearn <laughs> all the songs. Anyway, yeah, that's well, a lot. Well, about- well, no, I, I, we, like I said, we never get to talk about it. So yeah, Thank and you. when we saw you, we got to see yeah. you together at the Oakland Museum, and the show was was so fun. And the audience, oh. like at- you said, is real interesting. There are like clipping heads there, but then you know, parents and their kids were there. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also feel like now that you're in so many things, people that are like, oh, David Dix, oh, I liked him as Snowpiercer. Let's go check out his band, and then they're just gonna get blown away. And yeah. and be you know broaden their horizons through mm-hmm. this music. It's really interesting. There was a thing that happened like post Hamilton, right? When and like everything, you know, we we went on a tour sort of right after that, and uh, we were kind of scared, you know, because it was like, oh, these musical theater kids are gonna be here, and they're gonna like <laughs> hate this, you know. And it seems <laughs> like, uh, but you know what? It turns out is that the the kids who discovered clipping through their musical theater obsession like and come to the shows are the ones who like both things they are the center of that venn diagram yeah mm-hmm. and i i remember we were on tour opening for the flaming lips i tell this story all the time we played this show we were playing in orlando and we weren't allowed the the show was booked at the house of blues which is on disney property oh. and they wouldn't allow us to play at the house of blues we're now clipping to play there because our music is too aggressive, I guess, even though we all mm-hmm. make music for Disney in several different capacities. But this, right. is, anyway, this is like 2016 or something, 17. And uh, we, so we book a, another show with our friends, They Hate Change, um, incredible rap group uh, from Florida. And uh, yeah, and so we, we booked this other show. And I remember afterwards, we're sort of standing out in the crowd and I'm saying hi to people and signing autographs and this girl walks up with the big like hamilton book the tome this big thick book they put get pull out and like i can see her sort of walking up with her dad and i was like oh here we go you know <laughs> and i really about it but whatever she's, she's very sweet she's maybe i don't know maybe 14 or like 15 or something Aww. and she like also is very knowledgeable about the band like knows everything asked me to sign the book it's really cool her dad's kind of just like standing behind her looking like a little oh, sorry uh looking like a dad you know and um you know kind of wary of of his daughter like talking to this this guy and uh and then she steps away and he steps in he goes hey i just have to guys (laughs) he says hey i just uh i have to say thank you because my daughter is a teenager and that means she's an alien. And this band is the only thing that we agree on. And we drove together like 10 hours to get here. And we mm. listened to this music the whole time. And I was already a fan of you. And I had no idea you were in this musical or whatever. But like when she uh, discovered this, like it's literally the only thing we can talk about. So thank you. And I, that just made me, it was very, it was an eye opening moment for me about mm-hmm. uh, a, a thing that that this this phenomenon you're talking about about having a bunch of different kinds of art out there can can do sometimes uh particularly when you keep working on the stuff that is like sort of the less profitable like weirder yeah. end of it <laughs> you know mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It, i mean it's it's the it's the story of you can be good at a lot of different things and it's okay <laughs> it's and you okay. can embrace it <laughs> well you can embrace it you know other people may not like it but it feeds your soul Mm-hmm. And you're bridging the gap between parent and child, yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> and teenage yeah, yeah. child. Yeah, that's, that's I mean, you're doing the Lord's yeah. work. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are doing the Lord's work with teenagers and parents. Um, we're running low on time, uh, but uh, this year's going to be kind of big yet again for you. You've got live action Little Mermaid coming out Memorial Day this year, yeah. and speaking of Disney, and. <laughs> Blind spotting season two. Hey, we are so excited. I'm excited for both, but uh, you know, <laughs> really, yeah. I mean, if we can first, can we first start with the Little Mermaid? Yes. Just 
quickly yeah. because it was, it's still my favorite as a, as a kid. It was my Is favorite. It? Yes. Cool. The, the songs are still my favorite. I mean, it was the, the first time I saw an animated theater. boner. Do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget. I'll never forget being a young kid. Like what's happening to the priest. So how did that happen? <laughs> sure, Disney is thrilled that that's the part you remember. I'm <laughs> yeah. Sure I'm, we may have to edit this out. <laughs> okay. We can. Well, I don't know. It is called it's bitch talk. talk. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Animated boners. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Dummy. <laughs> anyway, back to you. <laughs> moving, moving, moving on. No, I, I, uh, I loved that one too. I remember lining up at the Grand Lake, like with, like opening mm. weekend with my dad to see it. Like I, I remember <laughs> that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I have seen as much as you have. I've seen the trailer. Like that's all I've seen of it too, and that was beautiful. So I'm juiced. Um, I'm like the process was so much fun um I, we were it was right before the world shut down and we were um and i was filming snowpiercer and also then like at the top of most weeks flying out to london to rehearse with the mermaid people and like they hmm. um rehearsed it like a like a play like for a month sort of everybody was just like in the lab kind of working on things and you know I, so I would be like developing the voice and rehearsing the songs and people were in there working on choreography and blocking and built on like models built models of the sets that were going to be these incredibly extravagant things and like it was a real it was a great like company to be in you know it felt like doing a play and then the cool thing about my work on it is once at the end of that, all the people who were just voices like we did their voice recordings and then I was done, you know, I, I was done and I kept offering if the world hadn't shut down. I did just come to hang out at the shoots, you know, because I was having so much fun. But like there were puppeteers in there with us the whole time who were going to be sort of performing the puppets along with whatever they cut of our final recording. So like they had to kind of watch us and learn our mannerisms, even though the final I played Sebastian and he's totally animated so you know they they filmed my face and stuff but it wasn't not like with dots they're not you know it was just to like get vibe and there's not a lot of face real estate on a crab on a like photorealistic crab <laughs> either so I, yeah. i'm very yeah, curious so basically eyeballs, how it's work. Right? yeah um, <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah i don't i don't i am i know about as much that's like the extent of what i know about how this is gonna work um, but I'm really excited. Hallie is amazing. And she, mm -hmm. what I have heard are, are all of the songs and she's, um, yeesh, she's really something else. And there's some new songs. Lynn wrote some new stuff Ooh. and, okay. um, you know, Aquafina is playing Scuttle oh, and she's a revelation. Oh. And, <laughs> oh, put in a good um, word for us. We really want yeah. her on the show. Jacob Tremblay <laughs> is flounder. Like it's, oh. uh, yeah, it, it, it's really yeah, so people are, everyone, everyone's going in. Um, I was at, uh, I was at Javier Bardem's camera test, you know, um, I'd happened to be there that day. Yeah. And like, all they did was, was like, put him in his full, like, look and dunk him in a tank of water and zoom the camera around him. <laughs> and oh. I was sitting there and I turned to <laughs> Rob Marshall, the director, and I was like, I would watch this for three hours. Like you actually don't have to make a movie. That is the most interesting man in the world. And like, yeah. he's dressed up like a, like the royalist of mermaids and he's underwater <laughs> and it looks unreal. It looked so wow. cool. <laughs> I, was like, uh, I was like, I think you guys got it. I don't know. Like, uh, <laughs> that's print, it. Print that. It's a wrap. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's exciting. All and right. Now blind spotting. Blind spotting. <laughs> what can you give so, us any detail? Uh, <laughs> it's a cool season, man. I'm really, I'm very proud of this one. Um, I think, I mean, I was very proud of the last one, but this one, just like the, the actors, you know, we got to bring everybody back and, and um, they're so dialed into these characters. And so what that allowed us to do as writers is to put them in even crazier situations. And, <laughs> um, there's some i'm not gonna i can't spoil too much there's a, a there's a trailer that's coming out soonish i think and posters and stuff so like we'll start to get information out soon but 
shots are going in. <laughs> I wish you could see it. Um, but the, uh, yeah, it's, there's some great cameos. There's some great like Bay Area cameos. Yes. And, thing, and um, the, yeah, the stuff we got to shoot in the town looks, looks as beautiful as it should. We were, we were mm. smarter this time, more intentional about getting locations that like we really couldn't get down here, you know, things that like, um, I think there was a big, a steep learning curve for season one about how to make a TV show. And uh, mm -hmm. we learned a lot of things and probably like the smart uh, budget conscious things would, would, would have been to like take those and, and shrink everything down. But what we did was like, okay, well that means like, let's do these things easier so we can like go way crazier on mm -hmm. the things we still don't know how to do. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, yeah, we took a lot of big swings and I think a lot of them paid off. I don't know. I love watching the season. I think Jasmine is so, so good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Jalen, she's just like so funny. Trish is a totally mm -hmm. unbelievable character this year. Uh, Benny playing Earl is so complicated oh. and, and like love. subtle and love beautiful. Love that character. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's good. It's good stuff. Um, it's really good stuff. I'm, I can't, I can't wait for it to come out. I can't wait for people to see it. And uh, yeah, it's going to be, yeah, like I said, I'm just, I'm just super proud of it. Um, and, and I think we, we learned a lot again. So if we get to do it another time, we'll, we'll get to try something completely different. It's a nice, having a TV show is a nice palette for like, experimenting on things on a really mm. large scale you know the mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. budgets for tv are way bigger than you can get for anything else sort of necessarily and um i think uh stars and lionsgate our partners have made this like situation for us where like the, it isn't super fear based um mm. which is great so yeah so we've just got the freedom to kind of try a lot of things uh and see if they worked and i i don't know hopefully everybody ends up happy with it i don't know we're very happy with it <laughs> so cool. we're excited yep we're excited um well top, before we yeah, go, go i I've, I've been distracted this whole time because you have the filipino flag on your arm and i i have to know what this hoodie is and um <laughs> did you wear it for us specifically because well, that's what her. i'm gonna tell people that and you did yeah yeah i did not wear it for you it was like a, you know i i had it on and i had i didn't change it because i was like oh well we, you know um <laughs> but uh Half roots of, of team. roots of fight is the name of the company they're actually a really cool company who do like this is you know a uh, one paying homage to the, the thrill oh, thriller, yeah. right? Manila. So, yes. But they have a whole series of Ali stuff, but they just did a great drop on Pele and they, they sort Aww. of use um, mostly figures in sports, but also other kind of important historic public figures like across like a very diverse group of, of uh, sports stars and artists and create kind of capsule collections around them. Um, nice. I want to look that really up. Cool Thank company. you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, last thing, I need to give out, uh, give a shout out to your mom. I love her. <laughs> um, I don't know if you know, but she commented on our last YouTube post from Snowpiercer. Mm -hmm. And I, your mom's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She is. I that. think she might she be... listen to bitch talk. I don't know, but well, sure she was she like, "Is it a is it a troll or is it really yeah. his mom?" I'm like, <laughs> "I think that's really his mom." No, yeah, I yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah the, she she be she be on the internet, you know, like yeah. what, <laughs> way more than me. Like she is way more active on social media than I am. Like I, I yeah, she is. Uh, you know, she's a researcher. That was her her gig. Uh, ah. So she like is information is her thing. And so she Funny. listens to everything. I'm sure she listens to your show. Well, um, shout out to your mom. She's yeah, yeah, she's yeah. great. Mom. <laughs> really cute. Yeah. <laughs> Dami, thank you so much. Thank you for being hey, the first you, yes. guest interview episode uh, of 2023 for us. Happy 2023. Say bye. I hope. Oh, bye. Aww, Moose. Bye. And I, I hope we get to talk to you more this year on the quarterly yeah. system. Let's do I it. Mean, we got least, a lot going at least on. Quarterly. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just, Sounds let's good. Let's just do it. I'll, anytime, anytime something else, anytime there's a good excuse, just like, Aww. let's, let's just do it. Um, okay. I'm into it. I love talking to you guys. Same. Thank you so much, David. Same. Yes. We are emotionally ready for the year. Yes. Thank let's you. go. <laughs> <laughs> we are prepared. <laughs>
If you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For more information about us, you can head to bitchtalkpodcast.com. This podcast is created, hosted, and executive produced by Aaron Lim. My co-host is Angela Tabora, a.k.a. Captain Party. The show's edited by producer Shar. We're powered by GoTo Productions. is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcast.bff.fm. BFF.FM, best frequencies forever.